Good morning to everyone. This is a topic 9 in the introduction to probability theory and statistics. In this topic, uh, we have already discussed uh, descriptive statistics starting from uh, types of data, what is the graphical representation of the data and what are all the central tendency measures mean, median, mode and the variability measures such as uh, sample variance, sample standard deviation, coefficient of variation, skewness and kurtosis and how one can uh, make a summary report of uh, any particular uh, data in the form of descriptive statistics. So, this we have uh, studied in the last uh, lecture with one example. Now, I am going to continue with the same model of uh, descriptive statistics and the statistical distribution as a lecture 2. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about uh, what is the meaning of statistical distribution. For that, uh, we should define what is the statistics. Already we discussed statistics in the descriptive statistics in a very layman language, but now I am going to give what is the definition of a statistics in the form of a probability and a statistical concepts. While doing that, we need three important distributions other than or in addition to what we have discussed as a standard distribution in the probability theory course. There are some distributions often it comes again and again when you describe when you discuss any real world problem. So, we call it as a standard distributions. So, in the standard distribution we have discussed uh, starting from uh, binomial geometric distribution, Poisson distribution in a discrete type uh, distributions. Similarly, in the continuous type distribution, we discuss the uh, uniform distribution, exponential distribution, gamma distribution, normal distributions and so on. So, these are all the standard distributions and these distributions are enough to study for probability concepts, whereas uh, if you want to study any statistical methods or statistical inference or any statistical analysis, you need uh, these three distributions. Without that, uh, you cannot uh, or you, you cannot uh, describe the sampling distribution or any statistical distributions uh, without these three distributions. Therefore, we describe uh, this uh, three distributions that is chi-square distribution, students t distribution and f distribution in detail like what we have discussed some standard distribution in the probability theory part. Same way we will uh, discuss these three distributions. After that uh, it is easy to study the sampling distributions uh, through this chi-square distribution or student distribution and f distribution. Therefore, the order in which I prepare the lecture notes, we will give a brief introduction about the statistical uh, or uh, sampling distribution then we describe uh, statistics, then we will uh, discuss uh, or we will explain a few uh, uh, simple statistics or very important statistics. Then we will discuss these three distributions, then finally we will give some results on sampling distributions. Why I have made it uh, some important results? Because we are not going to study the theory part of uh, sampling distribution, we are going to say few results only even uh, the sampling distribution can be considered as the full separate course. Therefore, I am going to say only few important results on uh, sampling distributions with the help of uh, what we discuss in the statistics and these three distributions. So, with that introduction, now we will move into the statistical distribution. Already I explained what is a population, what is a sample. Now I am starting the same point. Each 
outcome sorry each uh, data which you have taken from a population that is going to be call it as a sample. We denote that sample by small x1. For example, the 70 students uh, classroom I want to know the marks of a few students from there I want to have a rough idea about the students marks of the whole class. So, I just choose one student or select one student to ask what is his marks. Whatever the student is going to tell the marks that is a small x1. If you see it very carefully, I would have chosen any one student out of that whole population of 70 students. Therefore, selecting one from that population as a sample that is a random. You should remember the word how the randomness coming to the picture. Even though I want to select 5 students, suppose I want to know the marks of all the class by knowing the marks of 5 students that sample size is 5 and those 5 students marks are going to be random. Therefore, what I am going to do is uh, whatever be the distribution of the marks of the whole class, I do not know that what is the distribution, I label it as the sum distribution. Whenever I choose one student, uh, selecting one student and asking the marks, then that becomes the one sample. Therefore, once I get the marks that I treat it as a small x1 and that small x1 can be any one out of that whole population. Therefore, I am going to associate a random variable call it as a capital X suffix 1 that as a random variable associated with the first sample. That means, the possible values of the first random variable x1 is the different values of small x1 all possible values of small x1 will form a possible values of the random variables capital X1. And similarly, when I choose when I select a second student to know their marks, then that is a that mark is going to be small x2. And as abstract way, I am associating that with the random variable capital X2. And whatever the marks that the second student is going to tell that is one of the possible values of uh, the random variable capital X2. Like that I am keep going for uh, capital X n random variable and whatever the marks I am going to get it for the nth random variable that value is a small x. So, now we are connecting the data with the random variable which we have studied in the probability theory. You see the connection between the statistics and probability, this is the point in which each sample can be any values. Therefore, in the abstract way I am relating one random variable for each sample, therefore I have a n random variables. That is nothing but the n dimensional random vector that we also we have studied in the probability theory. Now, I am coming to the distribution part. The probability distribution of the population could be label it as the sum distribution capital F. And uh, for uh, sake of understanding and uh, clarity, I make uh, one random variable call it as a capital X that is associated with the population. So, in the abstract what I do what I am doing is uh, making a one random variable for the population and uh, random variable for each sample. So, each sample random variable becomes a capital X 1 and so on X n whereas, the population random variable uh, the random variable for the population is denoted by capital X fine that is what I have written here. Obviously, whatever be the distribution of the population and you have taken sample from the population. Therefore, the distribution of the each random variable also same distribution of the population 
is not it. Since uh, each sample is uh, taken from the population and uh, we have associated or we made it uh, the distribution of the population is uh, something and the random variable is uh, capital X and the distribution is capital F and uh, therefore, the sample distribution is also going to be the same distribution of the population that is the first observation. And another observation each sample can be taken any one out of the population and all are going to be identical also that is the second observation all the sample distributions all random variables are also going to be identical also they are independent same as uh, the distribution of the population that is the further information which you got it from the samples and the population. Now, the distribution of the population could be discrete type or uh, continuous type or mixed type or whatever be the form. The sample distribution is also going to be of the same as the population distribution. If it, this is a the population distribution is a discrete type then the sample distribution also of the discrete type. So, once you have a discrete type then there is a probability mass function attached with that. If uh, the population distribution is a continuous type then there is a probability density function attached with that small f of x then the samples also going to have the same distribution. Further we make uh, or we most of the time discuss the population distribution is normal distributed. That is the assumption in which we start the, the study of uh, statistics or uh, we start uh, all the statistical inference study or uh, whatever you want to do it with the data. We make the assumption the population follows a normal distribution. Then the immediate question comes <coughs> why so, why not some other distribution. Most of the time when the population size is huge, most of the time the population size is huge, whatever the samples you take and whatever the measures you want to interest and whatever the statistical analysis you want to do, those data if you make a conclusion what is the distribution the data follows with respect to whatever the measures you are looking for. Most of the time it boils down to follows a normal distribution. You can go back to the probability theory concepts when the size of a sample is large and um, you have a random variables all or uh, independent or need not be independent they are having some assumptions they are identical or non-identical. If you go for aggregate uh, aggregation of those random variable always approximated with the normal distribution with some conditions. Usually these conditions are very strong condition, but this can be relaxed over the steps you can relax those conditions, but uh, in a very strong condition the aggregated uh, information always uh, approximated by a normal distribution. Therefore, nothing wrong to make a assumption the population follows a normal distribution. This also can be relaxed for a introductory level of this course we can keep it as a normal distribution, but sometimes we discuss if it is not normally distributed what happened. So, that we will study as a remark after we disc we studied in detailed with the population follows a normal distribution fine. So, in this uh, the introductory level for the statistical distribution we started with the population and sample and we associate uh, population with the random variable capital X, we associate uh, random variable uh, capital X size for each sample of size sample of ith sample and we have n samples small n and uh, we assume uh, some distribution for the population. And since the samples are taken from the population 
therefore, the samples also going to have the same distribution of the population and the samples are taken in a random way. Therefore, the samples are uh, independent and identical. So, these are all the concepts we keep it in the mind for further study. As I said, this also can be relaxed, the population need not follow normal distribution, the population size need not be infinite, it can be finite. Like that uh, many more things can be relaxed and one can study for that. So, for a initially we will go for this assumptions, then we will relax one by one later. Yes, as I said uh, we will start uh, sampling from infinite population for a life to be easy first. Later we can go for the finite population also. That means, uh, the population size is huge, whereas your sample is always finite. It does not mean that the population is infinite, therefore, you go for samples also infinite, no. Sample size is always finite, whether the population is infinite or finite. So, let us start with the population size is infinite. Suppose, you take a first observation, first data that we call it as a small x 1. Since it is an infinite uh, population size, uh, when you take a second uh, sample that is also going to be one among uh, population minus that uh, first data. So, you can choose any one out of uh, population, the first data is already taken. So, the second one, since the population size is infinite, this is also going to be identically same as uh, what you have taken in the first. Similarly, third one and the fourth one and so on like that you can take n data. Therefore, uh, you have n random variable associated with that and all are going to be mutually independent because your population size is infinite. Not only that uh, they are identically distributed also. You should remember when we say the they are statistically independent. That means, uh, the example which I said uh, 70 students uh, and I am asking the marks of the 5 students, obviously those 5 students are different. But uh, my objective is uh, knowing the marks of the students. So, I am keeping in the mind uh, the marks of the students, uh, therefore, the marks can be anything. So, they can be same distribution of the population they are identically distributed and independent that is statistically they are independent and identical. If you forget about the word statistics, then obviously those 5 students are different, but once we take the keeping in the mind we are observing the marks of the students with respect to the marks those random variables are mutually independent and identically distributed. That is the meaning of a statistically we call it as a independent and identically distributed random variables of x 1, x 2, x n and uh, realization is uh, this values. So, small letters means values, capital letter means uh, it is a random variable associated with that. Suppose, we go for uh, sampling with the finite population, then the scenario is little different. Now, you will have a two scenarios, one is whether it is with replacement or without replacement, because the population is finite. That you would have come across in many situations, the population is finite. For example, the example uh, which I have said uh, out of 70 students uh, class, when I want to take the 5 students marks, uh, so the 70 cannot be treated as an infinite population. Obviously, it is a finite population. So, like that you can think of a infinite population and so on. So, now we have a finite population. For uh, let us consider with the with replacement scenario. That means, uh, you have taken a first sample, you observe it, 
then put back. Therefore, again the second sample can be out of uh, any one out of all n samples, uh, n uh, uh, population size. For the finite population size, we keep it as a capital A. So, since you have made it with replacement, so there is a possibility you will be able to get the same observation again and again also, there is a possibility. But still you can uh, consider uh, this can be considered as a mutually independent and also each can take the values with the equal probability because you have put back you observe the data and put back it's a with re with replacement so theoretically even though the population size is finite with replacement you can think of as the sampling from the infinite population the sample from a finite population with replacement because it is a with replacement it is same as you can think of a sampling from an infinite population because it does not affect you have put back the after the observation you put back the things back to the population therefore both are one and the same whereas if you have a finite population with the without replacement. Now, the things are different you have taken first sample x 1 and since it is a without replacement you can take a second sample out of a remaining n minus 1 populations population of size n minus 1 correct. Now, the each point is equal likely with the probability 1 divided by n minus 1 because you can choose any one out of n minus 1 with the equal probability. This procedure will be keep on going for uh, x 3, x 4 and so on. But still the distribution of each sample is identically distributed but uh, they are not independent because uh, it is with re without replacement therefore, uh, the subsequent samples are not mutually independent. There is a dependency you see that there is a dependency over uh, x 1, x 2, x 3 and so on therefore, they are not mutually independent, but uh, the distributions are identical. So, that is observation when it is a finite population without replacement. But usually we would not do this uh, without a uh, replacement we always uh, most of the time either we have a infinite population or a finite population with uh, replacement. Now, we are coming into the definition of statistics I am not directly moving into the definition of statistics uh, without uh, having a uh, some uh, idea about the statistics then I will give the definition of statistics in the next slide. <coughs> Basically, when you want to get some information about the data, you have something in your mind what you want and what you have. So, you create some formula or uh, you create uh, some function with the help of uh, samples then you are able to feel uh, what you want what is the information you want it that is statistics. Suppose uh, the same example of uh, 70 students uh, 70 students in a class and uh, my interest is to know what could be the marks of the all the 70 students in a particular exam but I do not want to ask every student what is their marks and uh, figuring out what is the marks of the whole class. Instead of that I want to have an idea at least or uh, I want to know what could be the mean of the whole class what is the mean marks or average marks of the whole class by getting the marks by knowing the marks from the few students 
For example, uh, let me go little detailed. Suppose I conducted a one exam of 25 marks Excel and uh, after the exam is over, I have corrected the marks, I have corrected the answer sheet and I have distributed the marks and everybody knows the marks. But uh, still my interest is to know what could be the class average. But without uh, calculating the class average by all the 70 students marks and make a average out of it, I want to have a some rough idea what would have been the class average of uh, this 25 marks exam by asking few students uh, marks. I just ask one student, so he said uh, 10 marks. Another student I asked, he said uh, he, he got uh, 17 marks and I asked another student randomly, it is a random sample. I asked the third students, so he said uh, his marks is uh, um, uh, sort of uh, <coughs> um, 3 marks. First student he said uh, 10 marks, second students he said 17 marks third students it is 3 marks. Then uh, I made a calculation 10 plus 17 plus 3, so it becomes 30 and uh, divided by 3 I made it 10. That means I have a rough idea the class average would have been somewhere uh, nearer to 10 based on this 3 marks. There is a possibility I would have asked some other 3 students randomly. Suppose they would have given all the 3 students would have told more than 20 marks, the exam is for 25 marks. Suppose they would have said all the 3 students, the sample size is 3, all the 3 students would have given their marks is more than 20 then uh, that time the sample mean would have been obviously more than 20. I would have got some information about the class average with the help of these 3 students uh, average. Or uh, there is another possibility, all the 3 students would have told the marks less than 5, the way one student said uh, 3 marks. Suppose all the 3 students would have given the less than 3 marks then that time also I would have got some information about the class average with the help of the sample mean of uh, that, that would have been less than 5. So, what I am saying is uh, with the sample I would have, have some idea, some computation to make it something is unknown to me about the population, it would have been distribution it would have been some measures with respect to the distribution. Those things I can be able to find out with the help of uh, samples and that function is going to be called as a statistics. The function which you create with the help of random samples to get the value of uh, unknown things related to the population. It would have been the distribution, it would have been the parameters of the population distribution. For example, population distribution follows a binomial and the binomial distribution has two parameters n and p. Suppose uh, I want to know what could be the mean of the population that is n into p. So, I am interested to find the mean of the population from the samples with some computation I can able to get what could be the mean, what would have been the mean of the population through the some calculation with the help of a random samples to find the mean of the population which is unknown. So, anything related to the population inference, the any information about the population which something is unknown that can be calculated with the help of a random sample that is going to be called it as a statistics. 
Therefore, it is not only one statistics you can create, you can create n number of statistics. The way you can create n random variables, n number of random variable you can create for a same probability space, you can create any number of random variables with the help of random samples and that is going to be called it statistics. Obviously, you have a sample of size n, therefore, you have a random vector of uh, n dimensional random vector. You can create many more uh, functions as long as they are random variable, then that is going to be a statistics. So, I am going to give the definition of statistics uh, in a correct way. So, this is a definition of statistics. Let capital X 1, capital X 2 and so on capital X n be a random sample from a population described by the random variable X. That means, uh, the random variable capital X is uh, associated with the population and uh, capital X 1, capital X 2, capital X n are the random variable, random variables associated with the random sample of x 1, x 2 and x n and small x 1, x 2 are the values or realization of the random variables from the sample of size n and I am creating a function called h for the n tuple. That means, whatever the value I am going to get that is going to be the value or if I associated with the random variable I am making capital Y is a random variable that is going to be a statistics provided that is not a function of any unknown parameters that is very important. So, as long as uh, in the function I keep all the known parameters in the picture and create a function then that is going to be called it as a statistics. There is a possibility the population may involve only one parameter or it may involve two or many parameters. You can create whatever be the function with the help of those random variable, but the involvement of uh, that function should be free from unknown parameters. You can keep any known parameters inside in the function. That means, uh, there is a possibility the population may have uh, some number of parameters in that a few parameters are known, few parameters uh, are unknown. So, whatever the known parameters you create the function with the help of uh, x 1, x 2, x n and the known parameters, then that is going to be called this statistics. That is the simple as it is. You know obviously, what is the meaning of random variable? First, it has to be a random variable with the help of x 1, x 2, x n with the known parameters as long as it is a random variable, this function is a random, y is a random variable, as long as capital Y is a random variable, then that is going to be called it as a statistics. So, there are many more statistics uh, which we can uh, discuss. Yeah, these are all the important statistics. The first important statistics is a uh, sample mean, because it involves x 1, x 2, x n and small n. Since, n is a sample size that is always known, that is not the parameter x 1, x 2, x n all are known values. So, if I use a small letter that means, it is a value sample mean is a value. If I use the capital letter then that is a random variable. Therefore, the first important statistics that is a sample mean sample mean is a statistics because it is a function of a random variable x 1, x 2, x n with the known parameters. Here we are not using a parameter at all, we are just using a random variables. The next important statistics that is a sample variance that we have already defined what is a sample variance. This also involves a n random variables as well as the sample mean already we made it the sample mean is a statistics. Therefore, you are using a another statistics to define the sample variance. Not only these two, 
the minimum maximum this also going to be a random variable first it is a free from the parameters itself it is a minimum or maximum not only minimum maximum in between also you can go for it order statistics we call it as a order statistics the not only minimum and the maximum you can go for in between all the other uh, ordering where you can uh, define therefore, you can have a order statistics. So, order statistics is the statistics that is what is called order statistics. Usually we go for minimum and maximum most of the cases sometimes in some example we go for uh, uh, not only maximum we will go for uh, second maximum or third one and so on. Now, let us discuss what could be the distribution of the sample mean if you know the distribution of the population. For that we start with the distribution of population first, we assume that the population follows normal distribution that is easy life, we can relax it that we can do it later but uh, first we start with the population follows normal distribution. Once I say the population follows normal distribution then uh, I have to say what is mu and uh, variance. So, that means uh, mu and uh, mu is the population mean and the sigma square is the population variance both are known. Initially we start with the known mean and the known uh, variance of the population. I have taken uh, n samples from the population that means, I, I know what is x 1, x 2, x n the values or the corresponding random variables are uh, capital X 1, x 2, capital X n. Since uh, the samples also having the same distribution of the population and all are identical and independent. Therefore, each xi's are uh, mutually independent and identical with the same distribution of a uh, normal distribution with the mean mu and the variance sigma square each xi's. I have not written here, I have not written here each xi's follows a normal distribution with the mean mu and the variance sigma square. This is a notation we use. Now, it is a simple exercise, simple exercise to conclude the sample mean follows a normal distribution with the mean mu and the variance sigma square by n. This exercise we have done it in the probability theory course after we introduce a n dimensional random variable. Suppose you have n random variables are independent and you know the distribution how to find the distribution of function of random variables because this x bar is a summation x i divided by n therefore, it is a random variable as a function of random variables and each random variable follows a normal distribution identical mutually independent. Therefore, there are many ways one can compute or one can get the distribution of x bar. You can use the typical uh, um, transformation method find the joint distribution then you find the marginal or you can use the MGF method. You can find the MGF of x bar with the help of MGF of each x size then you can do all the simplification using the independent and identical. So, you can be able to get the MGF of x bar by seeing the MGF of x bar and uh, seeing the MGF of normal distribution you can conclude x bar is also normal distributed with the mean mu and the variance sigma square by n or you can use a moment generating function sorry you can use the characteristic function you can use the transformation method or you can use the MGF method or you can use the characterization function 
find the characteristic function of x bar then also you can do that. So, it is a simple exercise uh, I leave it to you to compute find out the distribution of x bar as long as uh, you make the assumption population follows a normal distribution. Therefore, the samples also follows the normal distribution with the same mean and the variance and all are independent and identically distributed you can get this result. Suppose uh, your sample size is large, I am not using the word infinity, I am using the word large sample size. Then you can be able to create another random variable z is a x bar minus mu divided by sigma by root n. Then uh, since your population follows a normal distribution, this x bar follows a normal distribution. Therefore, you do not need the approximation, you is always get a normal distribution because your x bar is automatically a normal distribution and uh, you can make a standard normal by subtracting the mean divided by the standard deviation. But suppose you do not want uh, the population follows the normal distribution. For a larger sample size, for a larger sample size, it is possible whatever the distribution you have a x bar need not be a normal distributed with the mean mu and the variance sigma square by n. Suppose the population does not follow a normal distribution, whatever be the distribution it follows, but you restrict mean is mu and the variance is sigma square. In that case, you can able to know the mean and variance of a sample mean that is mu and sigma square by n need not be normal distributed. But for a large sample size using a central limit theorem you can able to approximate standard normal distribution. In this slide I am having a two different information one with the population follows a normal distribution you do not need a central limit theorem, you do not need approximation, it always going to be a standard normal distribution, the z is always going to be a standard normal distribution when the population follows normal distribution. But suppose the population does not follow a normal distribution, in that case still you will have a mean of the sample mean is going to be mu and the variance of the sample mean is going to be sigma square by n but they need not be normal distributed. But for larger n, by larger n you can apply the central limit theorem. The reason is uh, this x bar involves the summation of x i by n and all those random variables are uh, independent and identical. Now, I am not saying they are uh, normal distributed, they could be need not be normal distributed, but still I can apply the central limit theorem to approximate with the standard normal distribution by creating x bar minus mu divided by sigma by root. In this case the x bar is a not necessarily a normal distributed because the population itself a normal not a normal distributed. In that case you can approximate with the standard normal distribution. So, the conclusion is uh, whether you have a population follows a normal distribution or uh, not a normal distribution for a large sample size either it would have been exactly normal distribution if the population follows normal. If the population does not follow normal for a large sample size it can be approximately a normal distributed or by subtracting mean and the standard deviation it is going to be a standard normal. So, this is a very important observation therefore, whether you treat uh, the population follows a normal distribution or not does not matter when uh, you started having a sample size is large that is observation from this uh, example. Usually we have a sample size is also going to be large most of the scenario in that case uh, 
whether the population follows a normal distribution or not it does not matter, you can always approximate it with the standard normal di distribution by subtracting their mean divided by the standard deviation of the sample mean. You should remember one word important here large, I am not using the word infinity. The largeness is with respect to the problem. In general the thumb rule is a more than 30 data set, more than 30 sample information that itself can be approximated with the normal distribution immaterial of whatever the distribution follows as long as they are mutually independent. Identical need not be, but since we are studying through the statistical way, therefore each samples are the random sample from the population, therefore the identical is there. In a probability theory to apply the central limit theorem, the identical you do not need it, it is not a very strong that is a strong condition identical you know you can relax that identical also. But as far as the statistics coming to the picture the identical is always there because the samples are taken from the population and <coughs> independent is also there and only thing is whether you take a finite sample size or large sample size in a normal distributed population it is always going to be a normal therefore standardized normal is a small exercise. If the sample if the population uh, is need not be normal distributed still for larger sample size it can be approximated as a normal distribution or by subtracting mean and the standard deviation can be standard normal. The next example is a uh, next example for uh, statistics is a uh, sample variance. We can uh, find out the distribution of the sample variance also if we know the distribution of the population, the way we have done the sample mean. But this needs uh, some more information about the standard distributions. The way I said earlier, we need to know three more important standard distributions to discuss the distribution of the sample variance when the population distribution is known. That is a chi-square distribution, T distribution and F distribution. Once we know those three distribution, we can come back to study what is the distribution of S square when the population distribution is known. So, as such we will just write down this is a S square that is a statistics sample variance. We will come to the sample variance again after we study the those three distributions. Thank you.